Hello, welcome to the sixth video in the Labtainer walkthrough series. Labtainers are virtual machine labs provided by the Naval Postgraduate School, built to give students hand-on experience with cybersecurity concepts. These labs and their manuals can be found at mps.edu. In this video, we explore the Labtainer SimKey Lab, which explores different encryption modes and their properties using an open source encryption product known as OpenSSL. We will explore the properties of these modes, seeing a visual representation of the state of the ciphertext, and exploring error propagation during decryption in these various modes. Like any labtainer, we initialize the lab by running labtainer and then the labtainer's name, which for this lab is SimKeyLab. Once all necessary resources are downloaded, we can simply hit enter to start the lab. We begin our exploration of encryption with a simple encryption via AES128CBC. We first have to create a file, which we can easily do with Linux cat function, like cat arrow plain.txt. We then populate the file with some text and verify that the file was created properly. We can then use the open source encryption software OpenSSL to encrypt our plain.txt file. We indicate the cipher type we want to use, AES-128-CBC, and then give a dash E flag to indicate that we are performing encryption. We use the input flag of dash IN and specify our input file, plain.txt, and we use the output flag of dash OUT and specify our desired output file, cipher.txt. We use the dash capital K flag to specify the hexadecimal symmetric key, 128 bits for AES-128-CBC, and we also use the dash IV flag to specify an initialization vector required by AES-128-CBC, also represented in hexadecimal and 128 bits. You can generate your own 128-bit hexadecimal keys through any online random number generator. We can then check if our file was successfully encrypted by attempting to read it through the cat command. We easily see that the file is not readable. We can also take a peek at the hexadecimal representation of the file by running the command hexdump capital C cipher.txt. We can also take a quick peek at the differing file sizes by running the lshl command in the directory. The file details can be seen that cipher.txt is 14 bytes larger than plain.txt. The ciphertext file is larger because AES encryption works in block sizes of 128 bits or 16 bytes for CBC. Since the next largest multiple of 16 from 50 bytes is 64, the resulting encrypted file was 64 bytes. Theoretically, if the plain text was 40 bytes, we'd expect a ciphertext file of size 48 bytes. Now that we have an encrypted file, we can use OpenSSL to decrypt the encrypted version and see if we can match the original unencrypted version. Like before, we indicate the cipher type we want to use, AES-128-CBC, and then give a dash D flag to indicate that we're performing decryption. We use the input flag of dash in and specify our input file cipher.txt, and we use the output flag of dash out and specify our desired output file plain modified.txt. We use the dash capital K flag to specify the hexadecimal symmetric key, 128 bits for AES-128-CBC, and we also use the dash IV flag to specify an initialization vector, also represented in hexadecimal and 128 bits. Know how the hexadecimal key and hexadecimal initialization vector we use here are the same ones we use during encryption. This is the property of symmetric encryption, usage of the same key for both encryption and decryption. Now that our file is decrypted, we can take a peek to see that it looks the same as the original using cat. We can also compare it to the original file by simply running the command diff-a plain.txt plain mod.txt and see that no differences are found. Now let's play around with different encryption modes. Setting up this section, we open up the testing Firefox web page using the command start Firefox. With the Firefox web page open, we can see that there is an MPS logo. And looking at this MPS logo, we can see that the image is largely dominated by white, yellow, and blue pixels. This means a lot of pixels being encrypted will be identical, and any poor encryption method that produce identical results for identical pixel colors will be easy to break by hackers. We can encrypt the MPS logo by using AES in ECB mode with the following command, open SSL 
AES-128-ECB-E-N-MPS-Logo-WMP-OUT dash 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 MPS-Logo-WMP-OUT dash dash underscore mod dot BMP dash capital K and our key. You notice that no initialization vector flag is needed because ECB mode does not require an initialization vector. We then check the file details by running ls-l in the directory as seen below. Here we can see that both the original logo file and the new logo file have different file sizes. The original logo was 1678244 bytes in size, while the new logo is slightly larger at 1678264 bytes. If we attempt to open the Firefox page with a modified file, Firefox will not recognize it as a valid image. We can fix this by copying over the correct 54 byte header from a valid BMP file to our encrypted version to make the browser recognize the BMP file. The command to do this is dd if equals mps logo.bmp of equals mps logo underscore mod.bmp bs equals 1, count equals 54, com equals not trunk. After modifying the header, we can now check the web browser again with a refresh and we see the following modified image. Notice how the encrypted logo no longer has the colors of their original image, so the colors are encrypted. But we can still see what the logo looks like, because color regions that are similar remain similar, just altered in color. ECB mode is known as electronic codebook mode, and it encrypts identical plain text blocks into identical ciphertext blocks, which results in a lack of diffusion. This means that two groups of pixels that are yellow will come out identical after encryption, albeit a different color from the original yellow. This explains the change in color, but the picture can still be discerned due to the large patches of uniform color. The next encryption mode we want to play around with is CVC mode. We encrypt the MPS logo by using AES in CVC mode. When we check the file details after encryption, we can see that the file sizes are different again. Like before, we run the dd command to fix the header and check the web browser again with a refresh, and we see a gray image that looks like static. It looks like the pixels have been randomized properly. We can do this again for the CFB mode. We check the file details by running ls-l in the directory, and we see that, unlike the previous two, the size of the encrypted logo file is the same as the original file. Once again, when we run the dd command to fix the header and check the web browser with a refresh, we see that the image is a gray image that looks static, and the pixels look like they're randomized. We repeat this process for OFB mode. We check the file details by running ls-l in the directory, and we see that the encrypted file is the same size as the original encrypted file. Like before, we run the dd command to fix the header, and check the web browser again with a refresh. And again, we see that it's a great image that looks static, with the randomized pixels. CBC mode stands for cipher block chaining, CFB mode stands for cipher feedback, and OFC mode stands for output feedback. These modes are all able to do a better job of encrypting the logo because they use an initialization vector to make each message unique. Each mode does it in its own unique way, but the general concept is that some combination of the initialization vector and the previous block participates in the next encryption block, and this results in randomization between blocks, even if the original message blocks to be encrypted are identical. The size of the encrypted logo was larger for ECC and the same for CFB and OFB because ECB and CBC are block ciphers while CFB and OFB are stream ciphers. The block ciphers need extra padding because each input message is split into well-defined and uniformly sized chunks that their encryption is performed on. Meanwhile, the stream ciphers encrypt one plain text digit at a time, and this means that they do not need extra padding, maintaining the same file size as the original file. Now let's explore error propagation during decryption. We prepare this by taking a look at the size of the declare.txt file by running the command ls-l declare.txt. The size of the file of the declaration independence is 8054 bytes. A quick division by 16 bytes uh, gives us around 503.375 blocks. And so if we're working with a block cipher of multiples of 16 bytes, we need a round up, which means that 
504 blocks are going to be needed to encrypt the provided file, if we're using a block cipher. The number of characters AES can encrypt in one block is going to be 16 characters. This is because one byte is needed to encode one character, and there are 16 bytes per block size. Let's encrypt the declare file using ECB mode. Once encrypted, we can open the encrypted file using ghex to edit the hex values of the file and corrupt it. The specific command used is ghex encrypt underscore declare.txt. Once opened in ghex, we can go to byte offset 0 x one two three four and edit the rightmost digit of the hex pair so that only one bit is modified in the ciphertext. Here we can see that since the rightmost digit is 9, we can change it to 8 so that only one bit is modified. After saving the file, we perform the decryption process and compare the resulting file with the original declare.txt file using diff. We can see that there are some differences between the two files. More specifically, the string uh, colon, new line, new line for abolish has been corrupted. And you'll notice that this line is exactly 16 characters, or the size of one AES block. Since ECB encrypts and decrypts each block independently, corruption of one bit in a block will lead to the corruption of the entire block, but not to other blocks. This is why we see the corruption of those 16 characters, which are part of one encryption block, while all the surrounding characters were decrypted with no problems. Let's do the same thing with CBC mode. Once again, we encrypt the declare.txt file using CBC mode. Once encrypted, we go to the byte offset 0x1234 again, and we edit the rightmost digit of the hex pair so that only one bit is modified in the ciphertext. Here we can see that since the rightmost digit is capital E, we can change it to F so that only one bit is modified. After saving this file, we perform the decryption process and compare the resulting file with the original declare.txt file using diff. We can see that there are some differences between the two files. Like in EBC mode, the following character stream became corrupted, colon, new line, new line for abolition. Once again, notice how this is exactly 16 characters, or the size of one AES block. This time, however, an additional character in the following block, the E in the, was also corrupted and turned into a D. Unlike ECB, CBC does not encrypt and decrypt each block independently. Rather, decryption of each AES block is dependent on not only the corresponding ciphertext block, but also the ciphertext block before it. As a result, the corruption of one bit in a block will lead to the corruption of that entire block, as well as partial corruption of the following block. This is why we see the corruption of the 16 characters as well as one corrupted character in the following block. And that's all for the SimKey lab. Make sure you exit the lab terminal and run stop lab in the original terminal to save your work. See you in the next lab!